Federal Reserve revealed that XRP will be the new digital dollar. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell drops massive hint. Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your wonderful day. Welcome back to yet another video. This is the Crypto Society. Before we start, subscribe if you haven't already. Your support means a lot to us. Like and share this video to extend the support. Let's get started with where it all began. Brief of the comments made. The controversy began when former CFTC chairman Giancarlo Esposito stated that the Fed should wake up to the need for a digital currency. Pilot initiatives will be run by the Digital Dollar Project to see how effectively central bank digital currency functions. Washington authorities are debating infrastructure investment, what defines infrastructure and how much should be spent to improve it. A discussion of the United States' aging financial infrastructure, exemplified by the paper Federal Reserve Notes that still dominates many parts of the American economy today, is conspicuously absent from the debate, according to Christopher Giancarlo, the former chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. That's why the former government regulator teamed up with David Treat, the CEO of Accenture's blockchain department, to launch the Digital Dollar Project, which aims to promote the development of a digital currency issued by the Federal Reserve. Last Monday, the project announced proposals for nine pilot activities, intending to conduct real-world experiments to show how a digital dollar may help American consumers and businesses. We're on the verge of colliding with disruptive technology enabled by the internet and an antiquated financial system and financial rules, and nowhere is that more true than money, he told MarketWatch. He believes that a more than 10-year experiment with cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, BTCUSD, plus 0.84%, and Ethereum, ETHUSD, minus 0.24%, has demonstrated that digital money will play a revolutionary economic role in the decades ahead, and that governments need to wake up to this. Paper money is still extensively used today because it is simple to use and efficient in that unlike the modern accounts-based internet payment system, it does not require a network of middlemen to verify names, sufficiency, and receipt of funds. If the Federal Reserve creates a digital dollar, the benefits of cash, such as efficiency and anonymity, might be paired with the convenience of online account-based payments, according to Giancarlo. In August, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology established a partnership to test the manufacture of a digital version of the US dollar. But many proponents of digital money, like Giancarlo, believe that more work is needed. It's a highly important project, he added, but it's quite focused in its reach. It's a study of the technology architecture of hypothetical digital money issued by the Federal Reserve of the United States. His pilot research isn't focused on a wide range of societal and economic CBDC applications in the United States. To that end, the Digital Dollar Project has announced the launch of a series of pilot programs which will bring together private companies, government officials, and advocates for Americans without access to traditional banking services to test the potential benefits of a central bank digital currency. The pilot programs will be initially funded by Accenture. One project attempts to see what benefits digital cash might offer to Americans who don't have bank accounts because they live in areas where banks don't serve them or because they don't make enough money to have one. Another pilot idea is to work with state, local and federal government institutions to see if a digital dollar could be used to simplify the payments of benefits like food stamps. The Digital Dollar Project, according to a draft proposal, aims to see if transferring payments to recipients via a digital wallet can lead to a substantial reduction in administrative expenditures, which are expected to be approximately half a billion dollars each year. To raise public awareness of the technology's benefits, Giancarlo claimed that his organization aims to make all of the results of these studies openly available to researchers and legislators. We recognize that central bank digital money poses significant challenges and opportunities, but all we have so far are conferences and academic papers. We lack results in real-world testing, he said. We'll do real-world testing and make the results available to the public. He also believes that the initiative will instill in politicians a sense of urgency that this is a matter worth paying attention to, given that competitors like China are far ahead of the United States in terms of developing government-backed digital money and the challenges that poses to American ideals. According to Giancarlo, the United States needs to get the issue of individual economic privacy right and include it into the architecture of any digital dollar to adhere to the heritage from the Fourth Amendment, which protects against government intrusion into personal privacy. If we can get that issue right, he continued, the digital dollar can be the killer app of sovereign currencies, compared to China's digital yuan, where it would be foolish to expect it not to be a tool of state surveillance. Within a week of Giancarlo Esposito stating this, the Feds had the answer. The Feds have their take on the matter. According to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, 
the Federal Reserve will step up its research into a digital currency later this summer. To help ignite wide discourse, Powell said in a statement that the Fed will release a discussion paper this summer explaining the central bank's current thinking on digital payments and the benefits and drawbacks of a central bank digital currency, or CBDC. According to Powell, the Fed has been analyzing the advantages and disadvantages of a digital currency for several years. Last summer, a team from the Boston Fed began collaborating with experts from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to determine what it would take to develop a digital currency backed by the US. A digital dollar based on a decentralized blockchain, the ledger-based technology that underpins existing digital currencies like Bitcoin, plus 0.84%, would not be backed by the Federal Reserve. Crypto purists argue that it would simply be a digital version of the fiat currencies that the Federal Reserve issues, and with which Americans are most familiar, and that it would be fundamentally incompatible with Bitcoin. Powell made it clear in his address that any hypothetical digital dollar would not be a substitute for cash or existing private sector digital dollars, like bank deposits. Progressive Democrats consider the creation of a digital dollar, as well as accounts for every American at the central bank, as steps to assist poor Americans who lack access to the financial system. The race to a digital currency. The issue here is the United States and other countries' development of digital money. The rise in popularity of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies, whose market value has topped $1 trillion, sparked the thoughts. Unlike privately generated tokens, the new currencies would be issued by central banks to replace paper currency. Although cash would not disappear, its use would undoubtedly decline. To use the cash might be as simple as holding up a cell phone screen to be scanned. Behind the scenes, digital money would be transferred from one account to another. This is similar to how most money works now. The majority of US dollars are just digital entries in bank accounts. But the new currency might eliminate the requirement for a commercial bank or credit card network to act as a middleman. Vendors will be able to settle almost instantaneously, with no need to wait for money or be concerned about fraud. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen backed the US attempt last month by stating that a program like this could aid Americans who don't have banking access. In a video talk to a payments conference in Basel, Switzerland, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell may have allayed some of the bank's anxieties by stating that digital currencies would need to be integrated into existing payment systems alongside cash and other kinds of money. In a Bank for International Settlements panel on Monday, Powell said the Fed has a duty to be on the cutting edge of understanding the technological challenges, as well as the costs and benefits of a digital currency. But he won't rush the project. Powell also emphasized that the Fed would not proceed without consent from Congress, preferably in the form of legislation. The Boston Fed and MIT, according to Kunha, plan to present part of their work in the third quarter, including at least two prototype software platforms for transporting, storing, and settling digital currency transactions. He wouldn't say whether each network used the blockchain technology that powers Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Kunha claims that once the prototypes are made public, others will be able to see and build on the code. Kunha emphasized that the Fed's work is meant to show what can be done without taking a stand on important issues that the central bank, treasury, and Congress must address. These include questions such as whether the Fed should host client accounts, whether anonymity should be permitted, and what consumer protections should be in place of the event of a cyber attack or a mistaken transaction. We believe we must not wait for the policy debate because we will be a year or two behind, Kunha said. This will involve a lot of outreach to the industry as well as a lot of discussions. Banks are concerned about the potential that the central bank may remove them from their lucrative intermediary role in the US payment system. That is the most important factor to remember. Cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin are limited and unsuitable for institutional use. They're also bad because they put banks in jeopardy, rendering them ineffective. Since many banks and institutions already embrace XRP, and a small number of them have already integrated XRP into their systems, as a result, XRP is the only option for a digital coin's face. If the Feds choose one, it will be far easier than starting over and creating a new token and asking each bank to link in their systems, something that XRP has already accomplished in part. That's all for this video. We hope you enjoyed this one. Like and share this video to show your support. Subscribe if you want to extend your support. We post similar content on our channel. Until next time, we hope to see you in another video. Peace out.